Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the immediate past chair of the American Advertising Federation Board of Directors and Advertising Hall of Achievement member 2007, Kim Kelleher. Thank you so much. I get to pull you away from your main course um, and have the pleasure of making the next introduction. So there are few people in the industry who exhibit the vision and practical skills to credibly claim the title change agent. Sunil is one of them. He graduated, yeah, we gotta give Sunil just a big hand. Um, he graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in advertising from the University of Texas School of Communication in 2000. After graduating, he was chosen for the highly selective MAIP internship program by the four A's. Sunil started his career at Starcom IP, where he eventually led its broadband upfront initiative and soon became the driving force behind the company's play division. As the first marketing services company dedicated to leveraging games as a marketing channel, Play created an entirely new market for in-game and co-marketing opportunities for brands including Pontiac, Old Spice, and Secret. By 2007, he became a vice president and creative director at Leo Burnett's headquarters in Chicago, tasked with digitizing flagship agencies at the, at the network. The following year, he was appointed managing partner at Danu. While he was there, he was selected to attend the executive NBA program from the renowned Berlin School for Creative Leadership, graduating in the class of 2009 as its salutatorian. Sunil then went on to run the North American division of BBH Labs. Under his leadership, as a result, BBH was recognized as Webby Agency of the Year in 2012. As a consummate entrepreneur, Sunil co-founded the Viva Key Incubated Innovation Boutique, Finch 15, in 2013. He worked with Fortune 500 companies to help them understand how to invest in technology. Sunil then moved on to become Global Head of Business Transformation at RGA, where he is leading the disruption of the management consulting industry, giving clients the tools to become customer-centric, digital-first, data-driven, and purpose-led, and most of all, connected. Sunil has grown the practice over 100% year over year since his arrival. In addition, he consistently donates his time to teach, mentor, and speak at institutions like the Miami Ad School, Virginia Commonwealth University Brand Center, and his alma mater's Berlin School of Creative Leadership and the University of Texas. As the founder and executive director of Greatest Good, Sunil allows thought leaders in the different industries, in different industries, the opportunity to do the good that they want to do. Of all he's achieved, he is probably most proud of his commitment as a mentor, dedicated to driving diversity in any organization he touches or leads. Let's take a look a little bit closer at Sunil Radia. Sunil has worked with me for four different jobs. We got thrown together on a couple of pitch meetings. We hired him originally as head of media. The thing about Sunil, I guess it's WPM or something, it's the words per minute. First time I met Sunil, somehow in a week and a half, he'd managed to unravel and figure out all of the operational issues we were having as a team. It's one thing to know a lot about business. It's another to be an improv actor and like professional comedian who also knows a lot about business. Sunil is endlessly curious, so he kind of questions everything. There's some people that just have that natural ability to pull ideas and themes from uh, their experience and vocabulary. Which I suppose is all testament to his pretty unique, diverse, multi-dimensional talent. Or, of course, it's testament to him being a total bullshitter. Business has the power to change the world. And I think Sunil is one of those leaders that genuinely believes that. His superpower is this very interesting cross between being a business person and a creative person. He's also a brilliant contributor to the culture and to the mood of any company. He sort of starts to define where the industry's going and then the industry catches up. He's able to actually connect people and ideas and practices together. One of his very best traits is leadership. The result of that has been everybody that's worked with Sunil has just got better significantly. He is a wonderful father because he thinks about our daughter, Rourke, as 
a person. He really does see people for who they are. I really want to congratulate Sunil on just being the best of the best. Congratulations, Sunil, really. Couldn't happen to a smarter guy, a nicer guy. You are the best. Sunil, congratulations. Sunil, I want to say congratulations from me and from Rourke. We're so proud of you for everything that you do at work, at home, and for everyone in your life. I mean, sometimes I find myself like directly talking to his haircut. The thing about Sunil's hair is that it's so convincing. It's just a lot in there. In fact, thinking about it, I kind of see Sunil as almost like a vehicle to transport that hair from meeting to meeting. And it stays naturally in the right place. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sunil Radia. There's nothing odder than walking out on stage after your hair has been commented upon. So I'll pause for a moment. Um, so there's something funny about being in the AAF Hall of Achievement. Um, it's an award I'm incredibly honored to receive. Uh, and obviously the feeling of being inducted today is thrilling. But in many ways, I'm also an unqualified recipient. And to be honest, I was about to be even more unqualified. I turned 40 tomorrow. So I'm slipping under the deadline like Indiana Jones under the door in Raiders of the Lost Ark. But in this case, instead of reaching back for my hat, I'm grabbing a few bits of history to help me look forward. I say I'm unqualified because I really don't do any advertising anymore. Even in my most advertising-centric days, I was always a misfit. At various points, I was a media director, a creative director, and a strategy director. In fact, I recall a few projects at BBH where I got to help write a creative brief as the strategy director. I then accepted that brief as a creative director and I still fail to have my own ideas approved. I told you I was unqualified. So after leading innovation at BBH, I founded a corporate incubator for hire. Suddenly, I was trying to figure out the future of autonomous cars and machine learning for companies. And I haven't looked back. Now, leading innovation consulting at RGA, I find myself in a different boardroom every other week debating about future business models, cannibalization, and all sorts of stuff that's exciting and, frankly, stressful because the stakes are so high for these companies. I mean, even with all that homage to my hair, you can notice it's a different color three years later. That's because so many of these companies see their future as radically different from their past, and that's hard. And I would say being a misfit marketer is actually what lets me help lead these companies in their change credibly. We can see our own industry is changing fast. There's an increasing number of disciplines in it. And our actual purpose, the foundational purpose of marketing is changing. And because we've gone through so much of this change ourselves, we're actually really well equipped to lead transformation for companies and to do so with empathy. Suddenly when companies need transformation, when they realize how much more customer centric they need to be, they look to the marketers to guide them. That's an incredible position to be in. So I can't help but be quite optimistic about our future, even if it doesn't look like it used to. That's evidenced by the fact that some of the leaders being inducted today and in previous years don't look anything like some of the generations before. And I think that's progress. But one thing remains constant no matter how much we change, and that's the talent that's doing the work. And the best leaders know this. As I look at the table that uh, we're hosting here today, um, this is a list of leaders that honestly early in my career I would have asked for their autographs. And today I look at them as people that I hope feel proud because of their direct contribution to my award. Rashad Tabakawala is a digital guru to many, and the things he taught me are far too many to list, but the most important is how to develop talent. Later, I got to work for Emma Cookson, and although she'll deny it, and I can see her doing it right now, she taught me how to get away, how to do strategy properly instead of getting away with being smart. And finally, working for Bob Greenberg, I'm learning how to combine seemingly disparate things into powerful combinations others may not see. I also benefited from working for some of the best talented bosses in the industry, like Tim Harris and Barry Waxman. Each one of these people is a misfit in their own right, and they certainly helped me create a few as I've tried to pay things forward. I'd like to thank all of them. I'd like to thank the AAF as well for this honor. And finally, I want to thank my wonderful and supportive wife, Whitney, and our daughter, Rourke. I give so much of what I do to my job because I love what I do, I love the people I work with, but that's only possible because of their patience and their support. Thank you.